Holy moly! What is this FPS? Welcome to our gaming review of the new 16-inch M2 Max MacBook Pro with the top-end 38-core GPU. This system has 32 gigs of RAM, which is definitely enough. And in this video, I'm gonna test a bunch of games, both fully optimized Apple Silicon games, we're gonna have Rosetta 2 games on the Mac, and we're even playing some Windows-only games using Crossover, which is an awesome service. And you guys are gonna love this gaming review because I'm trying to make it super valuable by including the charts and FPS results from the M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pro so you can fully compare the performance of this new machine. Now, as you can see, I have the MacBook on our partner Grove Maid's laptop riser, which I love because it's made out of premium materials like hardwood and aluminum, matching the MacBook aesthetic while optimizing desk space right here so I can have my keyboard and my mouse and the ergonomics so I'm looking directly at the display. So check it out and get 10% off with the link below. Let's start off with something easy for this NTMAX chip. It's gonna be League of Legends, which is running under Rosetta 2. So it is using the CPU to do the translation. It's not fully optimized, but it should kill it with this chip. All right, here we are in game. I'm gonna set the settings to everything maxed out as high as possible. There you go. No frame rate cap, I don't want that. Turn off the anti-aliasing. We definitely don't need that. Uh, wait for vertical sync is off. There we go, everything's maxed out. Basically 4K resolution, close to it, 3.5K. All right, while in the action, you can see, dang, 88 FPS, 96, 108, 100 FPS right there, 97. Honestly, it doesn't seem like that big of an improvement compared to the M1 Max 32 core. Nice thing is we have not went below 60 at all. So I'd say about 80 to 100 FPS right here when you're kind of basically fighting people in action, 80 to 100, which is nice. You do see about 105 sometimes, so that's nice. But unfortunately, you don't get the full 120, which I honestly would expect with League of Legends maxed out. I mean, it is Rosetta 2, so there is a limitation there, but I would want at least 120, especially with the 38 core M2 Max. Now, the interesting thing is that when you're just here in base, 130, 120 FPS, so definitely a lot better, but as you get closer to the action, gets cut down to about, let's say, 90, oh, 110 right there. All right, with that said, I do have the scores right here. The M1 Pro 16 core got 61 to 88 FPS. The 32 core M1 Max got 75 to 95. And this M2 Max 38 core gets about 85 to 105. So there is an improvement, but not that big. All right, the next game we have is StarCraft 2. Once again, it's running under Rosetta 2, so it's not fully optimized. Let's see what we get. There you go, you can see the exact settings I have right here with extreme physics and ultra effects. 120 hertz refresh rate with vertical sync turned on. Let's see how this performs. All right, so unfortunately with the 3.5K, the overlay for FPS is absolutely tiny, so I gotta look close. Oh, oh my goodness, 120 FPS solid right now. No problem at all, 120 FPS solid. So now that I'm going out into the world, no issues at all, but I am getting some weird kind of glitchiness where it kind of like has hiccups. I don't know if that's part of Rosetta 2 issues or something else. All right, between 110 and 80 right now while we're fighting in the AI's base. And there you go, you can see how it is compared to the 32 core M1 Max. It's not that much better, but there is an improvement there running between around 90 to 110 FPS. So now let's run it at 1080p, basically 1920 by 1200, a little bit higher than 1080p, and let's see what we get. And now it is not that much improved between 110 and 120 consistently here, fighting in his base, but it does dip down sometimes to 80, 90. So the interesting thing is that going down to 1080p, 1920, doesn't really help that much. It's around the same, maybe a little bit more consistent, but not that much better than the old M1 Max. Now the next game is World of Warcraft, which is native with support for metal, apple, silicon, everything. We should see huge gains, but before we get into that, we've got to talk a bit about browsing the web, which can be a bit dangerous with advertisers tracking you and being prone to hackers, but thankfully our sponsor, Opera's Web Browser, 
fixes that because it comes with a built-in ad blocker and a VPN service for free. The Opera browser itself is also really quick and the sidebar is the most convenient way to access all of your social accounts in one place while feeling secure thanks to the free VPN, which protects your online privacy, unblocks restricted content, and bypasses network restrictions by changing your IP address to your choice of three locations, keeping your browsing secure while also being very quick, snappy, and convenient. There's also Opera's VPN Pro, which has over 3,000 high-speed servers across 30 unique locations to protect all of the internet traffic of up to six of your devices for only three $99 a month for a yearly subscription, being cheaper than the competition. And right now, Opera is offering our viewers three free months of VPN Pro by signing up with this promo code using the link in the description below, valid on both mobile and desktop devices. And now here we are in World of Warcraft. I've set it to 3.5K, full screen window, turn off vertical sync, anti-aliasing is off. I've set it to seven out of 10 graphics quality, just like I did before with the M1 Max. So you can see everything right here. And I have turned off the maximum FPS. I've turned off target FPS so it doesn't change anything. And let's see what we can get. Holy moly, what is this FPS? All right, the previous time I also tested in like an entry world zone. And oh my gosh, I can't believe it. You can see it right there, 500 FPS we are getting on the 38 core. Holy crap, now that we're not limited by Rosetta 2, it is really being unleashed. I cannot believe it. And the fans, nothing. 500 FPS, can't even hear the fans. They're silent. I can't believe we're hitting between 450 to 500 FPS. Oh my goodness. Now previously, with these settings, the 16 core M1 Pro got about 75 to 85 FPS. The 32 core M1 Max, 146 to 178. And now we're getting Look at that, 580, 580 FPS. So between 450 to about 550. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. That is a huge difference. That is why you're buying the 38 core M2 Max. And now you know what? The M2 Max chip deserves to be at 10 out of 10 graphics quality. So let's turn that up right there. Boom, 10 out of 10, same settings on everything. Would you look at that? Maxed out 10 out of 10. Oh my goodness, look at that. We're hitting 300, 380 FPS right there. What in the world? Oh my goodness. We're hitting 240, 200 now that we're fighting, but it did hit 300. Okay, this is a big range. Now I'm seeing 350. So depending on what's on the screen, it does go between, let's say 240 to about 320. And can you believe it? The 32 core M1 Max only hit about 96 to 105 FPS. So this is on a whole nother level. This chip is finally the one where you can get insane FPS playing these games. This is definitely gonna be good enough for the raids and everything else. Now moving on, before I get into these crossover Windows games, Grand Theft Auto V and The Witcher, Three. I do want to test a couple of more Rosetta 2 games, specifically Dota 2 and CSGO. And here we are in CSGO, you can see my settings right here. We got full screen 1920 by 1200. Here are the advanced video settings, a lot of them set to medium for now with of course vertical sync disabled and motion blur as well. So let's get right into a match. All right guys, right off the bat, I am impressed. Look at that, 165 we just saw, 118. Right there I just saw 89, I'm actually spectating right now. 108, 113, very good. Mostly it's over 100, 122 right there. So very good FPS so far. 89 actually right there, I just saw 89. And that's a pretty good improvement because with the 32 core M1 Max, I saw 62 as the FPS low. I'm getting 141 right there, I just saw 141. So we just got a high of 141 compared to 129, so not a big difference here, but let's turn up the graphics. Let's just go ahead and max it out 3.5K like I did on the other games. Let's see what we get. Are you kidding? I can't even see the FPS. It's over 100 though. FPS is over 100 at 3.5K in CSGO. So 90 right there, it does dip down a little bit, but over 100, not bad. 
3.5K res. All right, I played for a little bit and it looks like it gets between around 90 to 105 FPS. So keep in mind, this is Rosetta 2 Limited once again. So not that big of an improvement compared to the 32 core M1 Max in CSGO. Here we are in the settings. Just like last time, I'm setting it to 2560 by 1600, 120 Hertz exclusive full screen setting it to the best looking settings all right we're getting right into it it looks like 117 fps is the highest i've seen it's at oh 98 it just hit right there so 98 to 117 fps 104 fps 105 oh so close all right so with these settings 98 to 117 which is weird because it's exactly what we got on the 32 core M1 Max, so let's turn up the settings. There you go, we're gonna max it out, 3.5K once again. Boom, apply, now the FPS counter is tiny. Looking at 90 FPS now with 3.5K resolution. Everything looks amazing. All right guys, this is weird, man, because I saw about 89 to 95. That's almost exactly what we got on the 32 core M1 Max. So it looks like this game is limited by Rosetta 2. Absolutely do not upgrade to the M2 Max chip if you're playing Dota 2. And now before we get into those crossover Windows games, we've got to play the brand new Resident Evil Village, which just came out, so I didn't play it on the previous machine. But this has full Metal 3 Apple Silicon support. This might be the most optimized game alongside World of Warcraft for these Apple Silicon machines. All right, here we are, I can't believe it. You can use HDR mode in this game. Finally, a game that supports the 1600 nit display because that spot right there is insanely bright. I'm setting it to 3.5K, 120 FPS. V-Sync I want off, upscaling is off. Let's turn up that image quality all the way to two. You can see it's using a good amount of the VRAM. Look at that. 8 gigs. We don't need no anti-aliasing. Texture quality. Turn it up. Whoo, using a bunch of that RAM right there. I'm maxing it all out. I don't even care. Oh, the fans are heating up. I'm in the menus. I've maxed everything out. All the settings fully maxed out. Alright, so here we are and this definitely feels like not 60 FPS. I'm not getting an FPS counter, but man, that feels choppy. Yeah, just going like this. The fans of this thing are getting hot. All right, I think this is extreme. Like, look at that, the FPS is pretty low. Let me actually turn down the controls. Going back to image quality one, because it was too crazy. Texture quality can be high, one gig. Let's turn some of this stuff down. Mesh quality mid, shadow quality mid. Yeah, let's turn this stuff down. Let's see what happens. There you go, that's better. I don't know exactly how much, but this is definitely at least 60. That's a lot better. So, max graphics, it's unplayable. This right here is great. Still 3.5K, keep that in mind. So still really, really good. And now it's Grand Theft Auto 5 time. Let's jump right into it. Here we are in the graphics settings. We have 1920 by 1200 because this is a Windows game through crossover. So it's using Molten VK to translate the Windows-based APIs to Metal, which takes a lot of processing. And of course, Rosetta 2 as well. And you can see the settings right here. I'm matching it up to the ones that I played with on the M1 Max. Now getting into the story mode, everything seems super smooth. There is a little bit of glitches, which I think is from the crossover translation, but overall it's over 60 FPS all the time. So that is very good and reassuring. All right, so here we are, and we are getting some occasional glitching from crossover, but the actual FPS, look at that. So the crossover glitching with it kind of just like stuttering a little bit, every now and then is annoying, but it's like like that. But as far as when it actually is playing, super smooth. I mean, it's above 60 for sure, all the time. Very, very smooth, like it's fast. Like it might even be like 90. Look at that, super fast. That is a big improvement compared to before. Yeah, this is definitely an improvement between 60 and 90 for sure. I'd say even like 80 to 90 FPS. That's a big improvement in crossover compared to the 32 core M1 Max, which got between 50 to 55. It didn't even get solid 60. This is nice, between 60 to 90 for sure. That is playable 
finally with Grand Theft Auto 5. And now finally for Witcher 3, we are getting some errors and it is not turning on. I'm not sure why, or maybe this is a new version of crossover that somehow messed it up. Not sure, but it is not running. But we do know that Grand Theft Auto 5 improved a good amount on the M2 Max through crossover. So we do know there are some benefits in terms of that as well. So with all of that said, let me get into my final conclusion with the M2 Max. Is it worth buying this 38 core and upgrading if you wanna do some gaming? Well, if you don't already have the previous M1 Pro or M1 Max machines, then this is gonna be great for getting into Apple Silicon Gaming. It has a lot of performance, but if you already have one and you're playing games through Rosetta 2, the difference is not that big, maybe 10, 15, 20% in some of the games. Some games like Dota 2 didn't really improve at all. But if you're playing metal optimized games, for example, World of Warcraft, we saw a massive, massive difference. It is totally worth upgrading from the M1 Max to the new M2 Max if you play World of Warcraft or other optimized metal games. And of course, games like Resident Evil Village, if you fine tune the settings, work great on this thing. 3.5K resolution, it's insane. It definitely worked just fine. And unfortunately, there aren't that many metal optimized games. So if you're gonna be doing some gaming, just go buy a Windows laptop instead so you can have full support for all the games you want because still, we have a lack of support for games and that is disappointing. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this gaming review of the M2 Max 16 inch. Let me know what you think down in the comment section below. Click the circle button to subscribe for more videos like this one and we'll see you in the next video.